Hi, my name is Josh. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be talking about five sculpting tips in Blender. Now the first tip that comes to mind that I want to share is um, starting with the end in mind. Uh, this is something that's really important and it's a time saver, a huge time saver. It can help you eliminate unnecessary noodling and unnecessary sculpting. So figure out what you're making uh, as quickly as possible so that you don't waste time setting up things that you're not going to use. If you're making a model that's going to be animation ready, set it up properly for that. If you're just making a sculpt that's going to be in pose, then you, you're you going to set it up for that and you're not going to waste time doing unnecessary things. Another thing that I do um, with eyes, especially when I want to do cartoony eyes, is I use a lattice. A lattice helps you because, um, yeah, you can stretch a sphere and basically make it fit into the model, especially uh, with something that looks like the concept that we have here. Yeah, you could easily uh, scale the, the sphere sideways, but the problem is it will not rotate correctly. Um, so if you rotate it along its uh, local Z axis, it will not move like an eyeball and that might give you problems if you want to uh, uh, pose the eyes, for example. And usually I use the initial sphere as a placeholder for my uh, higher res eyeball mesh. So I use a lattice so that um, even though I stretch the sphere or whatever, I can still um, rotate the the eyeball as if it was a normal sphere. So when the character looks to the right, it still is gonna stretch within the shape of the um, lattice. Another tip that's linked to that is going from big to small. What that means is it's a concept where you kind of put all the big blocks in place first then you can go down into the nitty-gritty details so usually what i do for my sculpt um, is i try to block out um, getting the rough head shape first placing the eyeballs putting the big stuff first and even if i'm going to a body level um, i block out the body parts i put the neck the torso, mesh, the arms, uh, block out everything first before you go into the finer details um, because if you go too early into details um, and then things are not set up properly you might have to go back later on after you, after you reworked everything to uh, sculpt that particular detail again because too much has changed or whatever so it's better to start from uh, the big shapes the big building blocks and then go into the smaller intricate details the third tip I have is to always consider perspective and scale always try to view your model from different angles always spin it around um, if you do use um, also graphic view uh, in sculpting don't use it for too long because it's not giving you an accurate representation of what your model actually looks like so always go into perspective view scale is uh, very important uh, always uh, apply scale in sculpting because when you stretch and uh, scale things up uh, sometimes you forget to apply the scale and then that affects how your brushes work in in sculpt mode so always consider perspective and scale uh, when you're sculpting the the biggest tip that I have is find your own workflow experiment in blender in the beginning it might seem very challenging um, because you're new to everything but uh, there's not one way to do to sculpt everybody has their own particular workflow everybody has what works for them so find out what works for you try to um, experiment with different brushes see what they do um, and as you're making models as you are sculpting um, you'll kind of find the brushes that help you do what you need to do and the ones that don't work for you um, I think that's better um, yes watch time lapses watch uh, tutorials 
that helps uh, it might give you ideas and might lead you into things that you may have not thought of on your own but also experiment because the things that you learn on your own are the ones that really stick and uh, I think personally it's better to develop your own workflow than to rely on someone else's workflow because you don't know how they got to that part. But if you experiment with the tools yourself um, and you learn what they do, that kind of knowledge kind of sticks around a lot more than me telling you what to do. So um, moving on with the sculpt, this is where I'm posing um, the body. Uh, putting it in pose I like to start symmetrically for if I mean if the pose is not too extreme then I like to start symmetrically then try to pose it later with the tools that are in blender so I'm using the pose brush here I'm using um, uh, scaling and rotating um, and then I'm gonna align the dress to to the new pose Um, I think my final tip um, would be don't cheat yourself, you know, and by this I mean um, if you're at a beginner level, you don't know how to sculpt anything, um, then I think it would be best to not rely on things like base meshes, um, things that things that are like halfway sculpted and then you can buy on the internet yeah if you need to do something quick sure that'll be fine but um if you really want to learn how to sculpt you need to try to put those blocks in yourself and try to figure out human anatomy try to figure out the human figure and what it looks like for yourself because that would allow you to be more expressive you know but if you always rush to base meshes sometimes you can't really get the look that you want uh, because you're too reliant on the base mesh so i'd encourage you to try to start from a sphere uh, every once in a while um, and build out your models from there Um, and I wanted to talk a little bit about um, the hair process um, in this model. Um, what I did here is I sculpted the actual hair mesh and then uh, I uh, basically uh, emitted a particle system from within the mesh. So by default the particle system emits from uh, I think either vertices or faces, one of those two options. But in this case, I wanted uh, the volume inside of the mesh that I'm sculpting to also basically the hair to be emitted from inside of the mesh. So um, that, that was my approach. Um, and then I'm gonna show my hair settings. I basically, these are hair settings that I've fiddled with and, and tweaked over the years. So I took a screenshot and then kind of saved them. Uh, this is what I generally use uh, to make curly hair. This is what I start off as a base and I tweak as necessary for the model at hand. At the time of this recording, I'm using um, Blender 2.93 to add Sculpt Vertex Colors. That's how I got to paint the model. Um, I had two layers for the face. One had a color layer and one was used to mask out the glossy area and the not so glossy area so that I can have the lips uh, with a kind of lip gloss effect. For the pattern on the dress, I made a quick texture in Procreate, then I UV unwrapped the dress from with the projected from view option while viewing from the camera, which allowed the pattern to stay as is in the camera and not stretch in the camera view so it can stretch everywhere else around the dress but it doesn't stretch from the camera view please let me know what you guys would like to see next um i'm really looking to make content that's impactful and that helps you guys out uh, but that's it from me thank you for watching and i'll see you on the next video